Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be talking about rotational inertia and how rotational inertia affects acceleration. So, uh, an object's moment of inertia is its resistance to changing angular velocity. So an example in an automotive application, for example a flywheel. So a flywheel's moment of inertia is its resistance to changing RPM. So if a, if a flywheel has a high moment of inertia, when you press the gas pedal, it takes it a longer time for the RPM to build of your engine. If you have a lower moment of inertia flywheel and you floor it in your engine, then it's going to take a shorter amount of time in order for the RPM to build. It's its resistance to changing RPM. So once again, higher means more resistance. So if you take two cylinders here, um, and, and basically in automotive applications, everything can really be represented by uh, cylinders, almost. Um, all of the applications within a car where you would have rotational inertia. So uh, the moment of inertia for a cylinder is represented by the equation uh, I equals one half mass uh, times the radius, the outer radius squared plus the inner radius squared. So for example, we've got these two here, these two cylinders. This is a solid cylinder of a mass, M, whatever, we can just say it's 200. Uh, and then this one here, has that same mass, 200 whatever units, um, and because it's hollowed out in the center, it has a higher moment of inertia. So these objects are the exact same dimensions, this one's just hollowed out, and they're both the same weight. So what it means that this one has a higher moment of inertia is that it's more difficult for this one uh, to rotate, it resists change more. So if you were to take both of these and put them on top of a hill and let them roll down, this one would reach the bottom first because its moment of inertia uh, is, is less, so it wouldn't resist gravity and it would rotate quicker. Now, that's kind of difficult to comprehend why. So the way that I kind of sort it out in my head is um, with this example here. So here we've got a, a bicycle tire, basically. So all of the weight is on the very outside edge of this bicycle tire and then there's pretty much nothing in the center. And then the second object we have is, is like a bicycle tire, it's the exact same dimension, except instead of that tire on the outside edge, it's just a metal rim, basically. Just a metal ring going around that tire. And in the center of that, you've got a disc, and that's where all the mass is. So like I've drawn here, you've got that disc in the center, and that's where all the mass is. Now the thing to note about both of these is they're both going to have the exact same mass, and they're both going to have the exact same diameter. The only difference between them is going to be their, their uh, moment of inertia of these two objects. So the way I kind of see, well, why would this one reach the bottom of the hill faster than this? Why is its moment of inertia lower? Well, look, about, look at where the mass is and, and how far this thing travels. So here's our first wheel, um, and what happens is all of the mass is basically on the very outside. So as this tire rotates one full revolution, that mass is also going to travel that distance. So the distance that the wheel travels is this distance, one revolution. So this point is now that circumference and distance away with one revolution. And that mass also travels that same distance because the mass is all the way out at the outside edge. Now, if you take the second tire, and you have the same outer diameter, so you do one rotation, that outer diameter, that means the wheel is going to move that same distance that this one moved, but because your mass is further in, that mass is only moving a distance of, of that inner uh, diameter there, so it's not going to move the full distance that this wheel moved. So by decreasing the distance that the mass travels, in a sense, you're decreasing its moment of inertia, and it's easier to obviously do less work to move this uh, less distance than to move this a greater distance. And so this applies to everything that rotates uh, in a car. Um, I've written down some examples and there's probably plenty more. Drive shafts, crankshafts, differentials, flywheel, clutch, torque converter, gears, wheels, brakes, tires, pulleys, camshafts, alternators, and, and most of these can be represented uh, simply with a cylinder in some form of another. So what you want to happen is you want your power to go into pushing your vehicle forward rather than spooling up rotational components. So any power that you put into spooling up rotational components is power that you're not using to push your car forward. And so by reducing the amount of power you put into rotating components, you can therefore increase the force on the ground and your car will accelerate faster. So you're increasing your horsepower 
by decreasing your losses, basically. Um, and I've just got an example drawn here. You may see, for example, like a, a racing flywheel, and what they do is they'll take out, you may see like holes punched out of the outer edge. And so that's what they're doing is they're, they're reducing the moment of inertia by pulling the mass away from the outside and getting it closer to the center. Uh, so that's the basics of rotational inertia. I'm going to have a follow-up video to kind of go a little bit more in-depth and talk about uh, traction and how that would relate to rotational inertia. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.